back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin, and today's video is dedicated to dosage calculations. So I don't know how other facilities are, but at my school, dosage calculations are a big deal. We take them every semester for each clinical that we have. You only have two chances to pass it with a 90 or higher. If you fail the first one, you have to take remediation and you cannot give out any medications during clinical until you pass the second one. If you don't pass the second one, then you basically fail the semester. So it's really important that you understand those calculations. Even whenever you're actually a nurse, you still have to calculate, is this a safe dose to give my patient? Because you're held accountable for any medication mistakes. So I have with me a regular calculator. This is the calculator I use for my tests and I also use this to practice. If I don't have my calculator, I'll just use the calculator app on my phone or I'll Google a simple calculator. But I never use a Texas instrument or like a special calculator because I won't have that for my test and it's not really helping me learn. So I also put up a few questions. I got these practice questions from my school. So EC, I'm giving you credit for these questions. So grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil and your calculator or your phone and let's get started. So the first thing that I do whenever I take a test, whenever I'm doing calculations in general, is I write out a list of conversions. These are my conversions right here in the corner. And for me personally, I don't remember them by heart like off the top of my head. So I use a mnemonic from Picmonic and that is how I have this listed here. But if you remember them off the top of your head, then go ahead. So let's start with this question. The physician orders morphine 5 milligrams IV every 4 to 6 hours as needed for pain. Available is morphine 10 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters will the nurse administer? So me personally, I don't really read the questions fully. I just read what I need to know. Because a lot of the stuff is like filler. Like you don't need to know every 4 to 6 hours. You don't need to know that. Sometimes they'll include other information that's not necessary just to trip you up. So immediately whenever I start a question, I go to the last sentence. How many milliliters? How many milliliters? That's what they're looking for. That's what we want to figure out, how many milliliters. So I'm going to set up this little table. I'm putting milliliters at the top of the first one because we're looking for milliliters and this is going to give us milliliters. So we're seeing what is available. That's the second thing we want to see. Available is 10 milligrams per milliliter. So we're going to fill this into our table. One milliliter is 10 milligrams. So how many is in? Five milligrams. And that's how I basically say it out loud to make it make sense in my head. I'm saying one milliliter is 10 milligrams. So how many milliliters are in five milligrams? That's what we're looking for. So the way that we're setting up our table, we want milligrams to cancel out so that we're left with milliliters. So let's put this into our calculator. One over 10 times five. And the answer is 0 0.5 milliliters. And that is our answer. Whenever I write out my answer, I do it exactly how the question says it. So the question is saying how many milliliters? So I want my answer to look exactly like the unit they gave me because they're kind of picky on like if you're answering in the right unit or if you abbreviate it the wrong way. So I say exactly what they say, so I can't be wrong. So that was pretty easy. I'm starting out with the easy questions before I move into like the funky ones. So let's go to the next one. The next one, I'm going to show you how I cut through the question just to look what I'm looking for. So we wanna know how many milliliters. So I'm setting up my table, two milliliters. And then available is five milligrams per milliliter. So I'm going to put that in there. One milliliter is five milligrams. And then order 10 milligrams. So I make sure the units cancel out. So I'm left with milliliters and my answer will be in milliliters. So one over five times 10, and we're left with two, two milliliters. And we're gonna answer exactly how they asked for it. Whenever you're setting up your tables to convert, you wanna make sure that you include the units so that you don't get confused with what is canceled out and what you're being left with. So pretty simple. Let's move on to this next one. So this next one, we're getting into like the more 
I guess tricky stuff now. So we want to know milligrams. So we're going to set up our table for milligrams. And then we have one milligram per kilogram. So that's what we're going to plug in one milligram per kilogram. And then the patient's weight is 120. So we need to convert pounds into kilograms. And I'm going to show you how I convert in the middle of my equation rather than like converting on the side and then plugging that in. So I'm going to put one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Cause we go over here and we see that over here. And then the patient's weight is 120. So we're gonna plug that right there to make sure that pounds cancel out. So kilograms are canceling out, pounds are canceling out, and we left at milligrams so that our answer will be milligrams. And then I'm going to multiply, oops, I'm throwing my stuff. So one milligram over one kilogram times one kilogram divided by 2.2 pounds times 120 pounds. And then the answer that I'm left with is 54.545448. But that's not what we're going to use as our answer. So depending on how your facility is for rounding rules, that's how you went around. At my school, we are rounding to the nearest tenth place. So 54.5 milligrams. And that is going to be our answer. You want to make sure that whenever you are working out your problems that you don't round in the middle of your equation. And that's why for me personally, I like to convert different units in the middle of my equation rather than doing it on the side and then plugging it in so that I'm not left with like a long number or I don't like accidentally round in the middle of my problem. So then we're going to the next question. This isn't so bad. Okay, so let's see what this one's talking about. How many milliliters? Instantly, we're looking for milliliters. I'm sorry for like my rough handwriting, but instantly milliliters, we know what we're looking for. So what is available? 225 milligrams per milliliter. So one milliliter per 225 milligrams. So how many is in 0 0.375 grams? So they like to try to trick you. Like I said, this is why I don't want to read the full question, like, you know, get in my head because you want to add two milliliters of sterile water to yield the concentration. So I feel like if I would read this, I would add two to my answer and then mess up everything. But it's saying you add that to the concentration and it gives you 225 milligrams per milliliter. That's what it's giving you. You're not adding that to get your answer. So we're going to delete that because that's not important information that we need to know. And then we are setting up our table. So we need to go from milligrams to grams. So we're going to plug in the conversion and make sure our units cancel out to give us the answer in milliliters. Let's go over to our conversions over here. We see that 1000 milligrams is one gram. So we're going to plug that in and make sure that we're canceling out our milligrams is one gram. So how many are in zero? 0.375 grams and we're going to go to our calculator since I fly through my tests I like to go back through and recheck myself or sometimes I'll even like retype in my equations to make sure that I'm getting the same answer I don't want to miss a question over a simple calculation error or because I forgot to push clear on the calculator so we're going to go one milliliter over 225 times 1000 over one times 0 0.375 and then we are left with 1.66665 but like I said that's not our answer we have to round accordingly so we're going around to 1.7 and since our units canceled out we're left with milliliters and make sure you say exactly how they asked for it so they can't tell you it's wrong and then we're going to the next question make sure you have your whole list of conversions right there to help you 
what are we looking for? This is the drop factor questions. So we want to know the flow rate and it's in minutes. So we want to do 100 milliliters over 30 minutes. It says two grams, like we don't care about how many grams. That's irrelevant information. It's just trying to throw you off. And then 15 drops per milliliter. So for drop factor, you need to remember the equations. So you want milliliters over minutes times drops over milliliters. So we're gonna plug this into our equation. We know we want milliliters over minutes. So we want to do 100 milliliters in 30 minutes. And then we have how many, what's our drop factor? 15 drops per one milliliter. So we see right here, milliliters are canceled out and they want to know drops per minute. And that is what we're left with. So we're going to do 100 milliliters over 30 minutes times 15 drops divided by one. And then our answer is four, our answer is 49.99999. How do you count part of a drop? You don't. So anyways, it's 50 drops. You cannot count part of a drop. You can't count half of a drop. It's a full drop. So you always want around to a full number whenever you're dealing with drops per minute. On to our next question. So we want to know what rate will we set a pump to? How do you calculate the rate? The rate is always going to be milliliters per hour. So we're looking for milliliters per hour. So let's see what they're giving us to go off of. So it's infusing at 32 milliliters an hour, unnecessary information. Um, so heparin, oh, so heparin 1550 units an hour, concentration 20,000 units and 100 milliliters. So this is how we're gonna set up our equation. So we wanna know milliliters per hour. We wanna know milliliters per hour and that's what we need to be set with. So we need to cross out units. That's our goal, to get rid of the units. So we have 1550 units per one hour. So we're then we're gonna put 20,000 units on the bottom to cancel out these two. Oops. And we want to be left with milliliters per hour. So we have a thousand milliliters. That's what we're left with. So 1550 over one times 1000 over 20,000. And we are left with 77.5. And we're looking for milliliters an hour. So we're going to include that into our equation, into our answer. And that is our answer right there. So this is unnecessary. This whole 32 milliliters an hour, that's unnecessary. That's stuff that we don't need to know that they're just filling in to throw us off. But we are making sure, we're making sure we cancel out things that we don't need in our answer so that we can get the units that we're looking for, milliliters an hour. Okay, so now we're on to our last question. I hope that this is helpful. I hope that y'all are like getting somewhere with this. I'm sorry if I'm not good at explaining things, but this is just how it works in my head. So let's see what we're looking for. We wanna know what rate. Rate is always going to be milliliters an hour. So we're looking for milliliters an hour. We have 50 milliliters over 45 minutes. What rate should the pump be set? We don't really care how many milligrams it is. We wanna know milliliters an hour. So that is unnecessary information we don't care about. So we have 50 milliliters we want to get in in 45 minutes. We need to convert minutes to hours. So we're going to do 60 minutes are in one hour. And then so you see here, we're canceling out minutes to be left at milliliters an hour. So we're gonna plug this into our calculator. 50 over 45 times 60. And then we are left with 
six, six, point six, 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 all these sixes, like you can't do that. So we're just gonna round it up to 67 milliliters per hour. And that is our final answer. I hope that this was of some help for y'all. I hope that now you kind of understand the gist of those just calculations and that I could simplify it a little bit for you. If you have any other questions, please comment them down below and let me know. Good luck in your next semester of nursing school or on your journey to nursing school. And let's get this degree.